Hello, testing one, two, one, two. Is it work? Okay. Right. Is it okay? They say okay. Mute. Yes, yes, everything is okay now. Thank you. Okay, okay. great. Can you have that Okay, so I'm going to screen because now we're going to screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is that this is meant to be like, I don't have a lot of slides, okay? So so if you have any any question or any comment or, you know, any suggestion in the middle of the talk, just don't wait until the end, okay? And I'm, you know, I'm happy to answer any any question or any comment. Uh, Given that uh, I this is not my usual <clears throat> usual audience, so if anything is unclear or, or I'm going too fast or, or something is not well explained, just uh, feel free to, to let me know. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, before I start, this is mostly based on one paper um, published, uh, not published, but uh, posted on archive, uh, joined with uh, Tristan McMaster, who was back then at uh, Princeton and has now moved to. <clears throat> The University of Maryland and uh, Yao Lai and uh, Yong Yi Wong, who are both uh, in, in Princeton. And uh, yeah, I can suggest, I mean, the keywords here are self similar blow up, incompressible 3D oiler, and uh, <clears throat> neural networks. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, machine learning. This is also something that I have just started doing. Uh, but um, I don't know, I, uh, I'm quite impressed by right? uh, how powerful it seems to be. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, as usual, this work has been supported by the uh, ERC starting grant and the Maria de Manacu grant from uh, Okay, so let, uh, let me start. Um, I guess in this context, in this audience, <coughs> talking about 3D order. Doesn't, doesn't really need an introduction itself. So these are the 3D oiler, um, the 3D oiler equations, incompressible. So the divergence of u is zero. U is living in R3, um, or uh, R3 cross, uh, cross zero infinity, if we count time. And uh, yeah, u is the velocity of, of the fluid, P is the pressure. And uh, we are giving some smooth initial data and uh, the question here, or the 250 euro question, is well, if I start <coughs> with uh, an initial velocity which is smooth, let's say finite energy, then uh, will it have fine tension? Okay, so in other words, will some quantity, will some magnitude related to, to the velocity become infinite in finite time? Okay, so this is the type of problem that uh, people are trying to understand, and uh, so far. No success. Okay, so this is this is kind of what uh, is going on. Some candidates have been proposed, but uh, no theorem, of course. Oh, yeah, this is important. This is something I <clears throat> I didn't mention in this talk. So uh, disclaimer: no theorems, no rigorous results, no numerical analysis, uh, just picture. Okay, so I'm trying to uh, make it simple for everyone, and I'm trying to. Yes. If I can I understand this, you zero look at smooth finite energy initial. Is it not infinite or it's if it's, 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 it's smooth, it's uh, fine. The, the, so you zero, you can think of it as like a nice function in in a three, just uh, regular and you know something like this, let's say. Or I mean, not nothing crazy, nothing blowing up, no derivatives blowing up or something like that. This is my initial condition at time zero. Uh, sorry, there is a time here. This should be uh, u of x zero. Sorry, not 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 b. It's u of x zero. So the, the initial condition at time zero is given by some given function u zero. Okay. So <clears throat> the goal or, or the question is. If I'm free to choose the initial data, can I choose the initial data, data so that I have a finite time singularity? Or no matter what initial data do I choose, everything, all solutions, will live forever and will be smooth forever. Okay, so this is the dichotomy between uh, having a finite time law versus a uh, global, global solution. Okay, so this is this is the main 
this is the main question, say in the mathematical fields for me. Okay, I don't know if that answers your question. But I, I understand it's user is not separate numbers. It's not. This is a function of x, and it is the initial condition of the PVD at time t is equal to c. I will evolve the PVD starting from this initial condition u0, which is given. But the open scheme is that okay. x is u0. Exactly. The open question is because since I'm free to choose the u0. Can I pick one u0 so that, let's say, at time one, uh, the u, which is the evolution starting from this u0, becomes infinite in point time. Or maybe maybe not u, but the gradient of u, or, or the second derivative of u. OK? So far? So good? Uh, up to here? OK, great. So <clears throat> yeah, this is. And uh, spoiler, I'm not going to solve this problem today. Uh, so we'll see how far we can go. Okay, now <clears throat> let me talk a little bit about the geometry of, uh, of the problem. So I'm going to work <clears throat> in uh, cylindrical geometry and I'm going to work in axisymmetric coordinates. Okay, so just to make my life a little easier, <clears throat> I'm going to assume. That uh, the, the geometry of the problem, and I will be more specific in uh, two or three slides, um, is uh, cylindrical and, uh, and the velocity is, <coughs> is axisymmetric. So then I can rewrite uh, by changing coordinates, moving to cylindrical coordinates, I can rewrite the, the PVE. And uh, as some transport, so now my, my, my new. Variable is going to be the vorticity, the angular component of the vorticity. Uh, so some transport is something which is quadratic. And then uh, some other transport in, uh, in this part. Okay? And uh, there is some compatibility condition um, between the U and, uh, and the O, coming from the fact that the omega is a pair of the U. Okay, so nothing to remember from this slide. Uh, I will explain why this geometry is helpful uh, later on, because I'm not going to solve this problem either, or, or at least uh, straight away. Okay, so <clears throat> there have been many attempts in the literature, and typically this community functions in the following way. Somebody has a big computer, computes his or her favorite initial data, does some data fitting, and claims that there is a singularity. One year later, somebody else has a bigger computer and disproves it, and then sees that, okay, things that were going <clears throat> very quickly up, uh, then don't get so quickly uh, up, or maybe even go down, okay? And this has been on for the last 30 years, okay? So the scenarios usually last for uh, the time that whoever is running this thing on a computer or on a cluster has the biggest computer in the world. And then somebody else comes around, and okay, then this scenario is not uh, not feasible anymore. Okay, so <clears throat> this is more or less how this. But in the meantime, citations for everyone, and everyone is happy, and uh, and you know lots of talking. Uh, so <clears throat> um, so far, the, the the scenario that is, I mean, there are more, but one that seems to have resisted some time. <clears throat> this is like eight years ago, nine years ago. Is uh, the following scenario given by uh, Tom Tao and uh, Guo Lu, who is now in Hong Kong, but uh, both of them were based at uh, Caltech. Tao is uh, still, still in Caltech. Uh, and they consider the following. So they were simulating the time dependent problem that I, that I wrote down before. In this cylindrical geometry, in the interior of the cylinder, uh, let's say with periodic conditions uh, at um, the top and at the bottom, and uh, boundary conditions on the cylinder, so that the <coughs> normal velocity is zero, so the, the fluid is not, uh, is not entering the cylinder. And then they design some initial velocity in a way that it was uh, spinning down here in this half, spinning up uh, from this half, and the derivative was becoming non-smooth uh, since 
uh, so since the geometry is axisymmetric, um, all the points here in this disk are, are the same, <coughs> and uh, the velocity was developing, the derivative of the velocity was developing a singularity, or seemed to be developing a singularity, uh, on this on this circle. Okay, so r is equal to 1, z is equal to 0. And there was a lot of uh, spinning up and spinning down, and there were all, <coughs> all sorts of other like, secondary comments that they will explain in, in, in one side. Okay, so <coughs> this, by doing this, and um, yeah, they have a very big computer, um, they were able to report growth of uh, the vorticity by a factor of like 10 to the 8. Just to compare it with previous results, the previous results were reporting things, growth uh, factors of the order of 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4. Okay, so this is, this is a big, uh, this is a big improvement, I and mean, it seems compelling. Um, <clears throat> of course, the time it took them to, to do these numerics was also quite big. Uh, but so far it has resisted, let's say, for the last uh, nine years, nobody has been able to come up with a theorem or, or uh, a more robust computation or anything like that. So <clears throat> people believe that, in fact, this is a plausible scenario and this may, this may happen in, in, like for the equations. Okay? So, uh, moreover, <clears throat> they were suggesting that the, um, the blow-up um, was asymptotically self-similar. Okay, so that uh, somehow there was some scaling uh, and some power law in the sense that it controlled the way the blow up was happening with respect to some uh, spatial and temporal scaling. And I will be a little bit more precise as to what do I mean by, by that. Okay, so the, the, the domains which are done in the time, <coughs> the time in the problem also suggest some kind of uh, structure uh, in terms of X and T. Yes? Uh, can I ask you, which is uh, what you and who did? Is, uh, is the proposition of the velocities in the cylinder or is the numerical space simulation of this fixed scenario? Sorry, what was the first question? So, uh, these people is proposing the velocities of the fluid going into the cylinder or they are solving is different people solving the same scenario of the same? Mm, no, this scenario has only been solved by them, I mean, proposed and solved by them, uh, also given by the fact that at least back then they were reporting computation time of, of the order of months. So then, well, if you have, you know, a spare year or two, you may want to try to do that. But, um, okay, this establishes some kind of natural barrier to try to validate. Okay? But, some people have tried to prove theorems, saying that this could not be possible, or, or I don't know, to criticize the method, but so far it has resisted all, all the criticism. It doesn't mean that this happens, but so far it is uh, still standing. Yes? If you, if you initialize the run, yes. you're not pumping energy in. No. So is energy constant? Yes. Even though it is constant, it is moving to higher and higher scales. Okay, so then you would see smaller and smaller vortices at higher and higher velocities over smaller and smaller space. Correct. Okay, so then there has to be some relationship between the space where this high energy, high velocity exists, and because otherwise your energy will take off. Yes. Okay. Yes, and this is related to the similar scale. Yes, you move to smaller and smaller scales, and you develop finer and finer structures. Of course, up until the computer. You know, it's able to do anything, uh, but by that time they were reporting this growth, okay? and then they were you know, extrapolating the um, singularity time and so on, and claiming that this would blow up in finite <coughs> time. So yes, yes. For me, it's not very clear what does it mean. So I see Wait one slide. Okay. But maybe two. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. So Yes. This, 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 wait one slide. <laughs> okay, so, so this is taken from their picture. Uh, a much better picture is this one. Um, this one was done by uh, Quanta Magazine. So we were <coughs> interviewed based on, on, on the paper by Quanta Magazine, and they were much better artists than any of us 
is or whatever it will be. Um, so this is taken from uh, from the article, and this is again based on the how lower scenario. So <clears throat> this is not anything that we have done, uh, but uh, I hope this answers your question about the like about the velocities and about the arrows that you were commenting from the previous slide. So this this is meant to be this one, but of course much better. Okay, so these <clears throat> these two pictures are the same as before. This is a cross section. Everything is axisymmetric, so I could take here the cross section, and this is <coughs> a secondary flow. And at this point, which in terms is all of this because everything is axisymmetric, um, then everything is uh, bounded. But the the derivative of the of the velocity will blow up in final time. Okay, that's that's the claim. And that's uh, what they were reporting. And of course, the same similarity will happen in a neighborhood of this point or reality of, of the whole of the culture. Okay? So this is probably a much better picture than the one that I that I showed before. Okay, now this is as I said, the, the most popular surviving scenario today. Okay. Um, okay, so <clears throat> instead of solving, this is where we start. Okay, this is where we kind of uh, come in. So <clears throat> instead of solving 3D Euler, which, uh, okay, maybe something quite ambitious to, to start with, um, <clears throat> we're going to start solving something simpler, let's say. Um, so instead of picking a 3D equation, we're going to pick a 2D equation. So the 2D Boussinesque equations, which are given by this one, again, an incompressible velocity, u, theta is a temperature uh, in, in, in the physics literature. Okay, but now all this problem is set up in 2D, uh, or 2D cross 1, coming from the time, and uh, the geometry that they would work on is the, um, the upper half plane, okay, with the appropriate boundary conditions um, on, on the axis. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to try to solve these equations um, on the other half plane. Okay, and moreover, we're going to impose the following set similar ansatz. So we're going to assume <clears throat> that our velocity looks like this. Y is the scale coordinate by this power, <clears throat> x1 over 1 minus t. Here we are assuming, I mean, this Automatically, by assuming these ansatz, um, there will be a fine time singularity. Okay, and another story is whether there is a solution or not. Okay, but that's that will be my problem in the future if you know if, that, if this doesn't work out. But so this, in some sense, solves the issue of maybe putting an initial data that doesn't lead to a to a fine time singularity. Now. We're postulating that there will be a finite time singularity, a time one, because we can scale <coughs> space and time always to, to do that. And moreover, it will have this shape. Okay, so I'm losing degrees of freedom um, by the fact that I'm assuming something about the structure of the singularity, but at the same time, I'm gaining that my equation or my model is simpler. Now I don't have a time dependent TV. I have an elliptic TV or <coughs> whatever I have, but there is no time anymore. Okay, so my life becomes easier because I need to solve a problem in one dimension less. Okay, now the problem is effectively uh, 2D, so there is no time. Okay, and <clears throat> the equations become these two for um, the appropriate capital U, capital theta, capital T. Okay, so <clears throat> if we solve this, then um, there will be uh, a set similar solution to Boussines, and uh, I claim that if we have, so it will be a finite time singularity for Boussines, and I claim that if we have a finite time singularity for Boussines, we also have a finite time singularity. It is very likely that we will have a, a finite time singularity for 3D oil. Okay, so we will approach the singularities for 3D oil via singularities for Boussines. Okay, and I will show why. So uh, I'm going to work in vorticity formulation, and then instead of uh, instead of solving 
for uh, because I want to drop the pressure. The pressure makes my life harder because it is I'm a local operator, so I want to get rid of the pressure. And instead, I'm going to take derivatives and I'm going to take the curve on the previous equation. So if I look at omega, which is the curve of u, and then phi and c, which are the derivatives uh, in the in the two directions of theta, then this is the system that I that I'm going to solve. And I will have some for some compatibility condition between p and c, namely, for example, that the derivative with p has to be the derivative with respect to y1 of uh, c. Okay, so system is overdetermined, but they have some compatibility conditions in between the functions. Okay, and moreover, I'm going to impose certain symmetries um, that I'm going to, they will tell me to stabilize finding the solutions. And for example, this one uh, to just remove some symmetries because otherwise the method, I mean, there is a family of solutions to the scaling. So I want to extract one representative of that family. And I do that by, by choosing some arbitrary point and setting some value um, to be some number. Okay, so the zero and the minus one here are absolutely arbitrary. And I could have done essentially any, any two numbers there. Okay, but I want to just uh, remove those symmetries so that I don't have problems, let's say, with a bad direction or the Jacobian zero or something like that. Okay, and everything this is on the on the upper half plane, so that the gradient of u, the, the boundary conditions of infinity, are that the gradient of u, v and c are going to are going to be zero. <coughs> okay, so this is the setup. Now uh, let me explain why if we have a uh, blow up for the previous solution, I am very confident that we will have a blow up for 3D order. Okay? Let's do that. So, <clears throat> if we write Euler in set similar coordinates again, and, and I also claim that the type of blow up is going to be very similar in the sense that the structure, or most of the structure, will be inherited by, by Euler if we have it for losing S. So let's uh, let's go to such similar coordinates again for 3D Euler, and uh, let's pick these two quantities to play the role at the phi and the c were playing uh, before the omega and the omega. And if we do that and we rewrite the equations, then this is what we get. Okay, believe me that this is really what you get. Uh, and if you go back, these equations were the same as before, really the same as before, other than this term, epsilon 1, or e, e1, and this term, e2. So these equations with e1 and e2 being equal to 0 are exactly the Businesque equations. Okay? So the claim now is that e1 and e2 are exponentially small. Therefore, they are not going to destroy the structure of the singularities that we had, let's say, assuming that we sort of uh, were able to show that for the case epsilon one uh, uh, e one equal to zero and e two is equal to zero. So I'm going to look at this system as a small perturbation, an exponentially small perturbation of uh, two dimensions. So, so this is this is the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as a really tiny perturbation uh, of of Businesse. So now. Okay, I don't have to deal with the 3D equation anymore. I can <clears throat> try to fight uh, a 2D equation. Okay, and if, okay, once it's done, that's the calculation. These are the exact, everything is explicit. These are the exact formulas for E1 and E2, which are not relevant. But the point is that <clears throat> this is a good term as long as 1 plus lambda is positive. And the same, the same here. Everything is bounded, and this is going to decay exponentially fast. Okay, so as long as the candidate solution that I find satisfies this condition, lambda bigger than minus one, or one plus lambda positive, then these two terms are going to be <coughs> exponentially small, and then one would not expect them to destroy the singular character of, of the solution. Okay, so this is why I claim that blow up for pushiness implies blow up for, for three years. Okay, so <clears throat> there are some results in the past of non-smooth blow-up. So people 
have been able to prove <coughs> blow up for business and for 3D oil for very bad data or C1 alpha data. Okay, so very bad data, then you can cheat in the sense that um, <coughs> you can neglect some of the terms, that is, they, they act in different scales, and then some complicated terms belonging to the transport part um, are neglectable if you take alpha <laughs> small enough, and then you can produce a finite singularity like that. Any hope of uh, upgrading this result to smooth data will not work unless there is a big idea, like a big new idea, because uh, this data doesn't have swell. So if it doesn't have swell, then there is no chance that uh, a finite time blow up can ever happen. Okay? But there is some <coughs> results in the direction of very rough data. If you have a very rough initial data, you may produce a finite time blow up. Okay, and this is <coughs> more or less how they do it. They do, you can think of this as being some expansion at alpha is equal to zero or at lambda equals to zero. You reduce to some of these coordinates and then you can fabricate an approximate solution and show that close to this approximate solution, there is a true solution in your Okay, I won't enter too much into this, just by saying that if uh, you can look at this, at this problem in a perturbative way from the point of view of the regularity. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And uh, if you had asked me one year ago, I would have been extremely dubious of uh, this uh, strategy, very skeptical. Um, in fact, when we started working, I said, okay, we can try, this is never going to work. And this is a quote. Um, okay, but I was very wrong. And uh, <clears throat> it seems to be working. Okay, so um, we're going to use machine learning and uh, we're going to solve the, the PDE <clears throat> by using uh, machine learning technology. Say. Okay, so I don't know how many in the audience are familiar, somewhat familiar. Okay, so essentially, <coughs> how this works is that I have some inputs. So the outputs are clear, the outputs are going to be the velocities and the vorticity and all the functions that, I, that I'm looking for. Lambda, remember, lambda is also part of the problem, so lambda has has to be an output as well. I need to estimate uh, that, uh, that exponent. And the input are going to be, is going to be some, some collocation points. Okay? So, and then there is some magic in between, and, uh, and it gives me a candidate of uh, all of these functions. Okay? So it's a neural network for each, <coughs> for each variable, and, uh, and this is kind of uh, the way it happens. And I will explain a little bit of what is the magic um, behind the behind like in the middle? Okay, I mean, no, sorry, um, x some points x in my domain, x one, x two in my in my domain, the half plane. Is it only the coordinates of x or the values? just the coordinates of x or many x's? Or new x? No, uh, I input some vector uh, x. Well, so x n, so this is x one, x two, zero, one, x one, x two, two, x n, x one n. Okay, so I pass the neural network a bunch of these points, and uh, the neural network will output the values. Of the use and all the functions at, the, at each of these points. Okay, I mean, we'll output more. It will, I mean, I could recover a function defined on the whole plane. In reality, it will output all the parameters that I'm going to use to minimize, uh, to minimize, like to solve this minimization problem. Okay, but uh, you, you can think that it will give me u either at these points or essentially at, uh, at any point. Sorry, sorry, but the input is the node for the values of i1, y1, and y2 in this node. Ah, sorry, I wrote x. Uh, I'm sorry. Because uh, okay. in such similar coordinates, everything is a y. Okay. Yeah, all the x's here are y. 
And, but essentially, I pick a bunch of points here, and then <clears throat> this gives me u. So these are my points. Omega of x, and so on. So the input is any given point? It, the input is a collection of points that will be selected at random. Yes, okay, that's just when you learn the system. Yes. Okay, but then when we run the system, we only have y1, y2 that comes in. Yes. And we have the solution coming out. Correct. So we're assuming that the solution is steady. Mm, steady in what sense? Well, in, in, in y1 and y2. We don't have a third time dimension. It's still similar. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. There is no time here. Everything. So you could have done it with interpolation as well. Yes. Yeah. But uh, absolutely. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, and believe me, I've tried. <laughs> yes, but somehow, I don't know, maybe I did it wrong, but any method that I would try to solve this problem wouldn't work. Of course, in the sense that once you know that there is a solution, any method will work. Okay, but the difficult part for me was to figure out whether there was a solution or not, and, and you know, for what values of lambda. Okay, this I would never get it to work. My feeling is that because it got stuck in some kind of local minimum, and then I couldn't get up, or the method couldn't get up. This is my feeling, but this is more of like experience based in the way I implemented everything I tried, which I made no claim it was right. I can ask, but of course. I mean, you have all those complication points. Yes. If you had done an interpolation for any given other point, yes, that would have also given you a solution. Uh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. It would be bounded, and, and it may not, not have perhaps had some strange things that you're messing with. Maybe, yeah. but uh, okay. So, so <clears throat> maybe let's uh, sure. Okay. So, so what what the system will output? Maybe let's think about it like this. It's not just the u one at certain points, but it will output. Okay, I was trying to simplify. Let, let, okay, let me go to the next slide, and I will output. I will say exactly what it output. Okay. So <clears throat> essentially, what every of these arrows is doing. So this is <clears throat> in this. Machine learning terminology, this is a new one. Um, it's essentially taking some input x and computing or outputting here sigma, which in this case is the Catraboni uh, tangent, uh, of wx plus d. Okay? And <clears throat> this gets propagated in the, next, in the next layer. It will output sigma of w1 of ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, sorry, sigma and so on. So I'm composing more and more times with a sigma, and then taking weighted sums with all, all my elements here. Okay, so this is, so here I have a W1, B1, but here I have a W2, B2, and then I sort of put everything together, and I take linear combinations of all of these things, and um, compositions with, uh, with the function sigma. Okay, so at the end of the day, in this case, I will have like, Hyperbolic tangent of hyperbolic tangent of hyperbolic tangent of combinations of combinations of hyperbolic tangents and so on. And I will have like a very, very complicated expression at the end. Uh, and this is really what the system will output. It will output all the w's, all the b's, and all the coefficients in the subsequent uh, uh, linear combination. Okay, so if I know the w's and if I know the b's, I know you everything. Okay, so, so this is what it really what it really does. Okay, so in, in practice, after I <coughs> am playing it and I give the collocation point, any query about the value of a certain point can be solved just by evaluating the, the whole thing. Okay, so I don't need to do interpolation in, in that sense. Okay. Good. So now <coughs> the, the new setup is to minimize the error that I will explain what it is over the w's and the v's. So this is what the neural network does. This is what the, in my experience, when it beats everything I've tried until now. OK, so I will have uh, two types of errors. Maybe let me start with this one. This is the easiest error. So this is essentially the equation. Okay, This is the 
equation coming, like the error coming from the equation. If this is zero, my solution will solve the equation. Okay, so I have this contribution to the error. Of course, I wrote one, but there are many more because I have a system of equations. Okay, so this is one. Then there is another <coughs> another type of error coming from, from the boundary condition. Okay, so I'm penalizing, uh, and there are weights. Okay, all of these things are weighted uh, by choosing the amount of points and by giving extra weight to like the error coming from the boundary conditions or the error coming from the equations or the error coming from the uh, compatibility condition. Okay, so essentially, I want to solve. I mean, these are some of the equations that I that I want to solve. These are the ones coming from the equation and from the compatibility conditions. And ideally, I would like to find the Ws and the Bs so that all of these things are equal to zero. If I do so, then I win. Of course, I will never make everything to be exactly zero, but I'm trying to, uh, I'm the, the sum of all of these things uh, square. So, so um, I won't be able to reach zero, but I'm trying to make it as small as I can. Okay, so this is my goal, and I'm minimizing this over the Ws and the Bs from, from the system. Okay, so this is maybe recasting all this like neural network terminology as, um, as a minimization problem. Okay, so, so this is pretty much the problem that is fed uh, to, to the computer. Okay, and okay, so, so this is kind of the, the setup for Bushinis. Of course, when we started, um, Okay, so the, it will work, and I will show how, how it will work. But of course, when we started, <coughs> we didn't work on this problem. So we started with the easiest example we could think of, burgers. Okay? So burgers <coughs> is great, because for burgers, we can do everything by hand. Okay, so, and then if it doesn't pass the test of doing burgers, then let's move on and do something else. Okay? So this was the first baby test. For, for the system. It's also 1D, it's local, and it's as easy as it could ever get. Okay, and everything is known. For burgers, there are similar solutions, uh, and there are some that are smooth, some that are not smooth, and you can calculate everything by hand. Okay, so <coughs> we do so, and we set this set similar results. We plug it in, no time. Uh, <coughs> then this is the this is the equation that we have to solve. This is an ODE. Uh, if you do this clever trick of uh, writing y of u instead of y of e, instead of u of y, you can even solve it by hand um, because you can pass this dy by the u here as du by dy, uh, as dy by the u. Um, <clears throat> and then you get these solutions of the ODE. Okay? C is some, um, something parameter. Uh, coming from the OE. Okay, and if these values of lambda are um, one over an even integer, then you get a smooth solution. And if they are not, then you get something which is not. Okay, so the, there is <coughs> there is a therapy of solutions, uh, like a discrete set of uh, smooth solutions appearing for these values of lambda, and then for any other lambda, there is still a solution, but it's not smooth. Okay, so we don't want to find non-smooth solutions for business. We just want to focus on the smooth ones, which would be kind of the equivalent, um, the equivalent to this one. Yes? When you say non-smooth, blow up? No, I mean really not. This is already in the, they will not blow up, but this is in the, in the set similar world. Okay, so it, it falls a shock. Yes. But it doesn't blow up. The derivative blows up. Yeah, the derivatives, yeah. Right, right, right. But yeah, just, just the same. No, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So just for... Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And there is a shock, but when I say blow up, I mean some quantity blows up. Some maybe some higher derivative. It doesn't need to be necessarily the function. Okay, so in the same way as for Euler, like the, the singular, the proposed singularity for Euler, the U will not blow up. It's the the vorticity what will blow up. Okay, so <clears throat> this was the first test, and uh, and this is what it <clears throat> gave. Okay, so first it was able to find, and yeah, something <clears throat> is that these solutions here, like this hierarchy of solutions for i one, like zero, one, two, three, and four, 
and so on, they are less unstable as you move on from the therapy. So the <clears throat> unstable manifold of solutions around these ones will have increasing dimensions, meaning that for the ground state, the one corresponding to uh, I is equal to zero, it will have no unstable directions other than the ones coming from the symmetry. But let's let's uh, forget about those. Then the next one, where lambda is one, will have one unstable direction. The second one will have two, and so on. Okay, so numerically, to find this one, like any method, if you if you start anywhere, it will go to this. And if you want to find this one or this one or that one, then you have to be more careful. Okay, so then you have to really project or, or somehow take away this uh, unstable direction. Okay, so <clears throat> this is uh, what the machine output. Okay, so this is the ground state. This is the first uh, smooth solution, indistinguishable uh, from the point of view of, of the solution. The lambda is very well approximated. It's like 10 to the minus 7 <coughs> away. And it uh, found it, like it found it reasonably well, or at least to the accuracy that we were very happy about. Okay? <coughs> no magic. Anything will work here. Okay, this is, this is very easy. Something which is now <clears throat> not so easy, because we're, we're not really using anything about the equation. There are things you can do if you know the equation and then you can sort of uh, work your way around. But here we're not using anything about the equation other than the equation itself. Okay? So <clears throat> it would also find the second uh, smooth solution, just by constraining the lambda. Of course, we have to penalize the lambda because otherwise it would converge. But if we <clears throat> penalize the lambda in a way that it is constrained to, to some region where this solution is not there, <clears throat> then it goes to this one. And it does it in a reasonably good way. Okay, so the lambda, the estimation of the lambda versus the true value is uh, very close, and the solution itself is also indistinguishable, also at the level of higher order. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's good, because this is maybe not as easy. And moreover, it was able to find the non smooth solution, so the non self similar solution. Um, the, sorry, the self similar that were non smooth, if we can fix lambda, of course, otherwise it will converge to, to some other solution. If we fix lambda, um, to let's say 0 0.4, which is not one over uh, an even integer, then it was able to find the non smooth solution. Again, with a tiny error or with an error which was uh, good enough for, for what we want. Okay, so <clears throat> th this was promising, and we were happy that, uh, that this happened. Okay, <laughs> so we moved on. Uh, can we? Yes. I mean, uh, as. So, I mean, it, it will, we have time and we have the X, okay? Uh, as a, uh, we, have, we have two dimensions, which is the time and the uh, X. But here we don't have time anymore. We have now this mixed quantity, this mixed variable. So, you get rid of time by using this ANSATS yes. that Berger suggested, basically. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there is a danger that by choosing this, then there is no solution. But this is. Basically, you go from PDE to ODE. Correct. Ah, okay. 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 Uh, this is a textbook example. Okay, so, but this is our first uh, test. Yes. The linear on that is the same size as the one you're going to use for. No, this is one. So, this one, how many layers and how many neurons? Uh, pretty small. Um, let's measure it in calculation time because this is 2D and this one is 1D. Um, we could get away, we, we didn't try very fast in the sense that once we got these pictures, we didn't try to optimize the, the size. But this is uh, smaller than the one that we use for, for this problem. So, how many layers here? Five, I think. I, I don't remember the data for this one. But, uh, but again, you don't need a very, big, uh, a very big one because it's also open. So, then uh, your bike is a lot easier. I, I don't deny you can do it with less layers and with less neurons, but, uh, but, but this is something that we try, okay, it works, and then we move on to other problems. Like this was more of a benchmark or of a, like a, the first textbook example you can, you can think of. I'm trying to connect the dots <laughs> okay. uh, since the start. So, 
Uh, here uh, in the third picture, not a smooth solution. Yes. You're trying to show us that blow up singularity. No, 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 no. This is already in, in X over T plan. All of this blow up in, in X T variables. The, the, the derivative of all of those blows up. That would be the analogous to the vorticity in order. So, so all of these are shocks. Uh -huh. Um, but now I'm looking at this in this variable, and in this variable, none of them blows up. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're all smooth. So, so the goal was to show that uh, your uh, your neural network was able to predict the solution Correct. in such a way that in the in the real coordinates, that's the way you uh, they would go because you decided they yes. Yes, the goal was that the neural network would be able to solve this, so that after I'm doing this change of variables and going here, the solution flow. Okay, so the solutions that I, this is the advantage versus the time dependent method. Because here, everything is finite. Okay, maybe some derivative may blow up, but, but everything is <coughs> bounded. Whereas here, if I try to simulate, something is going to go wrong. Either the function or the derivative as, as you approach the singularity. So I'm removing that that difficulty by working in these coordinates. The drawback is that maybe there is nothing here, maybe there is no solution. This I don't know a priori. But if I make this leap of faith and I postulate that my solution is going to be of this form and it's a good guess, then everything is much easier. I have one less dimension and uh, and functions are bounded. So so it's a lot easier to simulate in this in these coordinates. Than here. I mean, of course, for progress, you can do anything anywhere, but let's say in a non trivial PD. So, uh, with your neural networks, uh, your input data is this ODE. Basically, the, you tackle this ODE. Oh. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, the neural network will solve two. Equation two. Equation two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Trying to understand. <laughs> The input for the neural net is y. Yes. And lambda? No, lambda is it has to be estimated. Not well. In the last here, lambda is fixed. Yeah. Uh, and here, lambda is free, and it's part of the problem. Okay, but now if you, if you run through the neural net, yes, the input is what? The y. And the output is uh, u. u. Okay. And and lambda. And lambda or just u? It's u, but given the u, I can estimate the lambda. I mean, lambda is, is part of the problem, part of the part of the thing that they need to figure out. Okay. Will be the input at the end, so I just use the final output. Um, you and lambda are unknowns, so lambda is an unknown of the problem. But there is a one question, uh, one question to, to unknown. Uh, well, and um, here there are like infinite, like this is a scalar. And this is a function. Yeah. So you have infinitely many and uh, depending on how you look at it, you have infinitely many no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the, your your unknown is a function, and then there is this extra scalar that we need to estimate if you want. You can do it all at once or you can do it in two stages, it doesn't really matter because it's it's part of the problem. Okay. Help me to think through that. If I have a smooth solution, the two question two. Yes. Then I can be sure that the first one, U, is a shock. Yeah, because here, I mean, it depends on the exponents. Um, but then, as, as t goes to one, t is one. T, t will go to one here. This is the singularity time. Um, we fix a finite time. T is yes. One. I mean, this one minus epsilon. So, so as t goes to one, this solution is going to blow up. Yeah. So the first one is almost zero. One but this one is very high. Yeah. Yeah. Also. But sometimes the zero times the infinite. It, it depends on it depends on the right state, but it will blow up. And what you trying to sell is that the equation number two. It, it cannot be solved with other techniques. No, absolutely not. This can be solved by time. 
equation, equation. This is a textbook example. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's a, it's, it's benchmark basically. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, something that I know everything, and I can do it in a million ways. I, I'm not trying to to sell that. I, I'm just saying that for the one that I don't know any way of doing it, it also works. But but of course, the story is that we started here, and, and we move on to more difficult problems. Uh, otherwise, it would be lying. If I yeah. like, okay, we just did the hard problem and that's it. Uh, but this is kind of where we started. This is the textbook problem. This is like yeah, yeah, the yeah. beginning of the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I, I was still skeptical here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in the end, neural network is uh, it's implemented here, no matter for which problem. It's, it's like a forward part. Right? If I call it the forward problem, it's uh, the work equation or the all equation. No, we are trying to build up a neural network to use it. We can replace them with it. Right? Yes. But we found that we will find a good neural network to replace a forward model. Sort of. But I'm claiming that this model seems to work independently of the equation with a lot of force. And so, but what you are claiming then is that, uh, as I understand, that with your governing equations and with the data that you have, uh, we can just give it uh, to the neural network and it gives us the output. I mean, yeah, but there is no data in the sense that the data is just some point, some random correlation point. So here there is no data. So basically, if you go back again, uh, so why you start from uh, equation number two? Why you are not starting from the start? I mean, I mean, if I, you... I could potentially do this, but then I will have problems. The derivative of you will blow up, so that that is bad. If you have to deal with infinities, mm -hmm. and second, I have one more dimension here. But you said we, you can solve the neural network with y one and y two. I mean, and there is two that's two. right. In this case, it won't matter that much, but if um, you can still do that, but you still have the problem of things blowing up, or so some things blowing up. And for that, you want to avoid like the quantity is blowing up by going to specific coordinates, or in other words, going to two. I agree that from the point of view of the dimensions, this is still fine. It's too deep. It's it's okay. And if I make comments, people have done it. Mm -hmm. There are solutions to neural nets for further equations. That's right. For the first equation, even for Euler, you might be. Yes, it's short to them. Yes, so that has been done. That's that's true. That's true. But if you want to go to 3D, yeah. then I haven't seen any solution being done in 3D. Yes, yes. And and but here you literally can do anything. Okay, so then you said, well, this is a local equation. Let's keep the dimension to be one and uh, work in a non-local equation. Okay, because then then the whole thing matters, the whole function matters, so it's not so, <clears throat> it's not so easy. Like here, the value of the function at any point depends on, or the derivative of the function at any point depends only on the function itself or the point. Now, in the next example, it will depend on every point. Okay, so <clears throat> this is um, something called the generalized the Gregorio equation, um, <clears throat> and now there are it's, it's a couple of equations, there is a lot. This is an approximation, uh, one of the approximations for, for Euler in 1D. So we have a velocity u and our DCD omega. And then there is this non local relation between the velocity and the vorticity. Everything is in 1D. Okay, so lambda here is the square root of the minus Laplacian. H is the Hilbert transform, which is this non local operator. Um, <clears throat> And we want to solve an A is free. A is a free parameter. There are some values that are interested, <coughs> interesting, but they won't get into those. Uh, so we're trying to solve this PVD now for a fixed A uh, in the same spirit as before. Okay? So we assume that the similar answers that the exponents here are given by the equation. Again, we have this freedom uh, in terms of the lambda. We move to such similar coordinates, we substitute back everything, and this is what we end up. Coming to solve. But now there is a non local relation between u and omega. Okay? So, same as before, 1D, but now uh, non local. We need to impose some symmetry, like some condition to kill off the symmetry. Uh, but, uh, but otherwise, it's kind of the same, 1D. But of course, here 
this is not a textbook example anymore. There are no explicit solutions unless A, a is zero or like very specific uh, conditions. So, uh, okay, but, but there are some numerics here at least that we could compare, like let's say more traditional numerics. Okay, this is the story. Let me skip it uh, because I'm a bit about time right now. There is a paper from 2021 where they were finding similar solutions for some values of A in this interval, which is an interesting one, and, uh, and even beyond. Okay, so now this is underreported, like there is a table in the paper, this is what we had, so the best, we couldn't compare the function, uh, we couldn't compare the solution, but we could compare the exponent. Okay, so they reported for every A in their, in their grid, they reported uh, the lambda. Okay? And, um, and okay, for A is equal to zero, there are some exact solutions. So for A is equal to zero, this looks indistinguishable. Um, and uh, for A between minus one and one, they're not exactly the same, but they are pretty close to each other. We feel these are the same solutions. It, it's not clear who is right. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that solution is like the exact solution or if our solution is more correct. But nonetheless, they seem to be very close to each other. Um, in certainly in this regime, towards minus one, uh, things get a, a little bit more complicated because they start to be some things start to be more singular. You can see here that now uh, the u grows at infinity. So then there are some issues with both methods actually. Okay, so pretty reasonably accurate, one like to each other, um, and not all. Yet uh, one B. Okay, so this was encouraging, uh, and this is <clears throat> when I started thinking like, okay, maybe this could work. Um, okay, some bad things that we want to prevent is that like these spurious solutions where u is linear and all the other solutions are zero. So to to avoid that, we need uh, some decay of the gradient of infinity just to avoid. I mean, we want to avoid zero, which of course is a solution, but that's a solution we don't want. But we also want to avoid these uh, spurious solutions, so we <coughs> need to impose some, some decay of the gradient of u at infinity to build those up, just to, uh, just to not select them by the middle. We select random collocations, in, random collocation points in a, in a big box. Actually, these are not the original y1 and y2. We do a change of variables, like an exponential change of variables to map a small box to an exponentially big box to reach, um, um, to reach further on. And we select uh, a collocation point in, in this box. Um, <clears throat> these are, okay. So if you remember for burgers, we saw that for every lambda, there was a solution. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was uh, smooth. And some other times it was bad, it was non-smooth. And something similar happens here. Okay, so if we pick the wrong lambda, then we get something that looks okay, uh, <clears throat> but not so okay if one looks at, at the error. Um, so this is about uh, three orders of magnitude, or two and a half orders of magnitude less than the solution, this is fine. Um, but there is <clears throat> some non-smoothness that you don't see like with the naked eye in, in the use. Okay, so, so this is something that we want to avoid. This is something that we, um, we want to discriminate between this and like a smooth solution. So we need to change a little bit the collocation points. If you see all the problematic here happens at zero, so we are going to put more grid points around, uh, around zero. Okay, <clears throat> we compare with the Chen and Howe results. This is an asymptotic series. It, it matches pretty well. This is not the solution. Like for one, is this one? It's not the solution, but asymptotically, it does match um, pretty well. And as I said, <clears throat> um, there is a big, a bigger cloud of collocation points towards zero to to deal with this uh, non-smoothness that happens at zero. And we let <clears throat> so there is this um, exponential change of variables, ten thousand collocation points. And we do the training in two stages. So we use Alan for the first uh, stage, which is a stochastic gradient descent, just to get rid of all the local minima. 
And then once we hit a point where we are more or less confident that we are at the global minimum, then we use uh, BFJs, which is, uh, it will convert faster. Okay, so, so this is more or less, this is not by any means the only possibility. Um, this is what people uh, mostly use in this literature, in this uh, community, which is actually pretty new. I mean, the seminal paper is from 2019. It has about three to 4,000 citations in three years. Um, so it's <coughs> quite active. Um, and this is what we found. This is already outdated. Now our errors, like this is the solution. These are our errors. It is reporting better than minus four. We can now <coughs> get things of order to, uh, of uh, 10 to the minus seven, 10 to the minus eight. Right now, with similar training time, okay, we're talking here about uh, 20 to 30 hours on one GPU. So we are not really using any heavy, uh, heavy resource or, or anything like that. And uh, it works. I don't know why, but it, <laughs> it definitely works. Um, so, so this is our self-similar solution to Business, uh which is uh, very close to a self-similar solution to to 3D. Um, we want to make a rigorous proof. In the end, we will do a computer or our plan is to do a computer assisted proof of, uh, of, of, the, of the existence of these solutions. And uh, using, we have done some, we have some experience in the compressible case where we have found solutions that are not shocks. So we have found other solutions like imploding solutions where everything blows up uh, at the origin. And we have done that well, not just for compressible oiler, but for compressible navier stocks as well. So we have found blow up solutions uh, for compressible navier stocks. And uh, the idea there was that in some regimes, depending on the scaling, the viscosity time don't matter. They, I mean, they matter, but they are not dominant. So the singularity is not destroyed by the viscosity in that regime. This has to do with the subsimilar exponent. So one can put some viscosity in the equation and yet find, still find Set similar, uh, or, I mean, still find blow up, which is of asymptotically set similar nature. Okay, so this we are very confident it should work here. So, so I'm talking here going from oil to navier stocks, even in the compressible case. Um, of course, I mean, there is a lot of hand waving and I'm not claiming anything. I'm just saying that we know how to deal with viscosity in certain regimes. This, this I can claim. Some other direction that we are exploring as well <coughs> is to find. So, so this was with the cylindrical boundary. We also believe that there are finite time singularities with no boundary, the time in the axis. Um, we don't know yet, but we strongly feel that, but, but they are unstable. So nobody has seen them or they have seen them in very weak um, ways. Uh, we feel that we may be able to find them because we are also able to find unstable set similar solutions, okay? But, we will stay one. So no, no, no claims. And uh, yeah, let me stop here. Thanks a lot for for your time. Thank you, Javier, for very interesting talk. You raised a lot of questions during the good, good. explanation. That's that's very really good. So uh, still, we may accept a couple of questions, even if we are in a good run of time. Right now, two questions. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, so one more. So you actually solved the problem for each one of those collocation points. Uh, no, I fed all these collocation points to the neural network, and then from. Uh, I mean, when you say you fed, it means you, you solved something for that. Yeah, but I minimize. You penalize the residual. In exactly. Like exactly. That's the, the, the but how many times did you solve the actual equations? What are the actual equations? I mean, I I minimize. The residual of the equations, the boundary conditions, and so on, through all the hundreds of times. Okay, but if you say you minimize the residual, I mean, you have a derivative, so you have to take some papers or something. No. These are the gradient fields. How do you take Well, the 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 part, it's, part, part, it's, part, part, it's, it's not properly local, right? How, 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 do you, how do you take the UDX? The UDX? The U is explicit because if I know. Okay. Yeah, of course. So, so if I know the W and the V, then I know the U. 
say, right? But but this is explicit as a function of the u, the w and the b. Okay, so you do a numerical differentiation? No, I I do automatic differentiation. Ah, I propagate. Okay. okay, okay, all right. Okay, so say, yeah, it's not so through all the neural network. Yeah, yeah, so you, you propagate everything. You propagate the entire derivative of you, you propagate the field of transform. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. And yes. Now you say Adam comes down until you reach the global minimum. Yes. Well, global, <laughs> what what we feel is the global minimum. But your neural net. Yes. Is n faculty the equal minima, you can switch one neuron by the other one, mm -hmm. and you can change the coefficients and the weighting, you get the same optimal solution. Yes, so you get yes. n faculty global minima. Mm -hmm. Where n is the depth of the neural net. Okay, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> same yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sure. It's good. I mean, unless you do bias ordering or something, in order to get rid of that, right. you have a faculty yes, 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 equal yes. minima. Yeah, of course, the problem is symmetric. Yeah. Careful, yeah. man. Stefan, question? Like, my instrument for curiosity, and uh, it's uh, based on the fact that the, your next task was about the linear R2 group. Yes. And how this group enters in the context of the, like, the million dollar price question. In, uh, like, just a curiosity. Because, I mean, this is all oil, okay? Uh, okay, first of all, this is all about dreaming. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not claiming anything. Uh, the clay price is about the Yeah, I know. But I mean, I'll this uh, first steps because I'm the, you, you know, start with the very difficult. Uh, so there are two things that are not really the clay price. One is the geometry, the clay price. Uh, okay, the clay price for Navier stocks or even the mention of the case of Euler uh, in the clay price uh, statement is in R3 or in T3 in the torus. There is no cylindrical geometry. Okay? So that wouldn't solve the millennium price or even the millennium price without, without discussion. The way it is, it is written. Um, yeah, so we have a But uh, um, yeah, so, so that, that is also connected to this task. If you remove the boundary, then essentially everything here is local. So you could just set it up in a framework where you are like on the torus or on the on, on space. But yet we are very, very far. We're very far from the clay price yeah, or yeah. anything related to the clay yeah, price yeah. problem. Okay? So but um, but yeah, if okay, so if we work in the geometry of the full space or the or the torus and we have the viscosity and everything works out. And we are very lucky, then we solve the clay right? But of course, this is this is a dream at this point. So yeah, it's yeah. not uh, it's just let's go to the contract. Okay, thank you. I mean, we have to close now, but so the proper many people is uh, following that online. So thank you. Uh, thank you for again. For thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you.